Hey guys, Mark Spencer. Um, I just made a video, uh, a long-winded one, about 14 minutes long, about reasons for checking valve lash, not just to set it, but to catch any problems in your valve train. And I realized after making it, I didn't feel like remaking it again, that I left out a pretty important part, and that's when to set the lash on the intake and the exhaust. The old days, when you had very stock cams, uh, you just brought the engine a TDC and you set both the intake and the exhaust lash. No, no, no. Not anymore, guys. Um, not for a long time. Any performance cams which have a lot of overlap, you can't use the TDC method. You have to use the exhaust opening intake closing method, EOIC. And I'm going to demonstrate it on this cylinder right here, okay? I've got a breaker bar on my motor, plugs are out, okay? Intake, I mean, sorry, exhaust valve, okay? Exhaust, when it's just starting to open, you go to the intake valve, okay? Which on my particular setup here is 22 thousandths. You go in and you check it. It should be a nice, just a nice little fit, okay? Not too tight, not too loose. Everybody has their own preference. Doesn't matter if you set it on the really snug side or the somewhat looser side, just make it consistent, okay? So, exhaust valve is just starting to open. You do the intake, okay? Then when you're done, Crank the motor around. It takes time. Some guys chase left and right me. I just like to do it and hit it with marker know that it's done. I'm going to bring this thing around now. Okay. Watch the intake valve. All right. Intake valve is opening. Remember, exhaust opening, intake closing. As the intake is closing, then you go to the exhaust, which happens to be on my setup, 24. So I got 24 here. And there we go. In just like I said. It's not very tight. It's just enough, snug, okay? Where I couldn't get a 25 thou in and a 23 would be too loose, okay? It's just my feel. It feels a little tight right here because I'm trying to get under the lash cap, but if you look, here I'm moving with my fingers. It's not that tight, okay? So remember, exhaust opening, just starting to open, do the intake on that cylinder. As the intake is starting to close, almost close, do the exhaust. That way, you do away with any issues with overlap. If you do it with the TDC method, I promise you, you're gonna have a valve train that's clickety, clackety, clickety, clackety, not, not a rhythm. This, when it's running, well, the exhaust is loud, but if I put a stethoscope to it, it sounds like a sewing machine. It sounds like a rhythm, okay? So, and this happens to be the LSM tool I was showing you guys before, where you set it, you don't have to kill these little jam nuts. If you listen, it's, that's it. It just sets it to a set torque, comes with three different size Allen wrenches, and you're done. Sorry I didn't mention it earlier, guys. Good luck. Hope I'm not boring you. Just trying to save you some trouble and help you. And some guys also vary the lash from stock settings or cold to hot. My hot setting happens to be 2426 which I did check it hot. I don't like working on a hot engine, but it turns out that it's 22, 24 cold. So that's what I set it at. Um, and don't be tempted to play around with valve lash uh, to look for power. It's not there. And if it is, if you tighten up your valve lash, say by five, eight thousands, and you pick up power, which you're not gonna see on the street, by the way, not even gonna see it at the track. But if you pick up power on the dyno, or if you loosen it up and you pick up power, and I'm talking about like 10 horsepower, something like that, you have the wrong cam for your engine, but don't really vary from what the manufacturers uh, tell you. And also, that cold setting I was telling you about that I have, this is cast iron heads, cast iron block, and cast iron hemi heads, okay? Thick as a motherfucker, okay? It's a brick of cast iron, okay? So there really isn't, the only difference that you're seeing here and what's changing is the actual valve itself is growing in length from cold to hot, okay? But if you have an aluminum head, especially a small block Chevy head, or a big block Chevy head, or even a an aluminum hemi head, that head's going to grow. And when the head grows, it pulls the valve away from the rocker and you wind up with more. So you need to be aware of that, whether you got an iron block iron heads or iron block aluminum heads or aluminum block aluminum heads. They will all be different settings, okay? Get yourself in the ballpark when you first build the engine, go through the trouble of getting to operating temperature, take it apart, burn your fingers, check the lash at operating temperature, and then you'll know what to compensate to set it at cold pressure. Sorry, 
If I'm boring anybody, just trying to save guys some trouble and help people out. Uh, Lash is a little bit of a tuning tool, maybe with a stock eliminator motor, but it's mainly checking to see they should be consistent. They shouldn't change. If something changes in one hole, you got a push rod cup getting eaten up, you have a lifter going away, you have a bent valve, something. But if it varies from what you set it at, and you should be the only one setting your valves, not somebody else. Everybody's got a different feel for a feeler gauge. If it varies, look for a problem in that hole before you have the engine on a cherry picker. Mark Spencer, Spencer Speed Shop. Peace, love, drugs, cosmic debris. God bless all of you. Goodbye. I'm not making the video over if I stutter. I'm a one-take motherfucker. Okay, goodbye.